This is for our selfie project in Photoshop. I've taken a quick selfie and I've got it opened up in Photoshop and uh, I can go through what the first thing I want to do is duplicate my background layer with command J and then I can uh, click the eyeball on my locked background turn it off and we just keep that in case we have uh, other issues uh, later on and we need to uh, make some fixes um, so I'm not really into taking selfies and this was just a quick one I was looking more for composition the selfie you used uh, can be uh, anything uh, any way that you'd like whether you take it with a phone as I have done or with your DSLR uh, this will uh, this process will work for either one uh, the first thing after we've duplicated the layer we want to make any adjustments uh, to our colors uh, we can uh, play around with it up in image adjustments uh, and adjust things this way or we can come down here in our layers palette and make layer adjustments either one will work um, if we do the layer adjustments we'll need to um, flatten them uh, into or merge them into our uh, layer one uh, copy of the background so I'm going to play around with vibrance a little bit. I'm just going to bump up some colors. Just a touch. And I'm also going to adjust my curves. I'm going to create a little bit more contrast in the image. I don't like how white my forehead is so I get this little finger with the slider on the edge of my curves click on my forehead and I'm just gonna drag it down a little bit so my forehead's not quite as bright as it is all that's really doing in this photograph is making it gray which I'm not very happy with but it will have to do uh, so I get my photograph where I want it and um, any other editing that you uh, want to mess around with you can um, because I took this photo in my bathroom that this little piece that I really don't want in the photograph so uh, what I'm going to do is grab my healing brush and I'm going to do a patch and let's see my I'm going to click on source this is my source actually I don't like that we're gonna pull this a little bit bigger like so and then oops I did that backwards and then Z what I want is destination okay and then I'm just going to match that up a little bit that is not what I intended I think what we'll do is just clone it out so holding down my option key I click and then I can go in here Uh, 
to make sure my edge is soft. Okay. And you may not have um, as much editing as what I'm doing. In fact, you would be better off not to. This is why it's important to look at all the little details before you take your photograph because getting it right in the camera is so much easier than trying to fix it in Photoshop. And when people say, oh, can you just Photoshop that in or out for me? You can say, sure, if you want to make some extra money. It's a good Photoshop artist is going to make some really good money. And a bad Photoshop artist is going to starve. Okay. So I've got that uh, closer to what I want. Now, so I've got Curves 1 and Vibrance 1. I want to combine those three layers into one. So all I need to do is come up here to my layers, scroll down to Merge Visible. The shortcut for that is Command-Shift-E. Okay. Now we need to start uh, creating some saved selections, or sorry, we need to start making color selections that we can then save for later on. So we're gonna go into select up along the top, and we're gonna choose color range. Now this is gonna get really repetitive, uh, so uh, beware of that. All right now, that red that you're seeing, that's a mask I'm going to uh, turn that off. Under Selection Preview, I'm going to click, uh, change it from Quick Mask. I'm going to change it to None on the photo. Uh, your other options are Gray Scale, so anything that is white or gray is what's being selected. It's the same preview as in here. Uh, you can do Black, Matte, or you can do a white mat. I prefer none, and I, re I rely on what I see in my color range preview to know what is being selected and what isn't. So my first selection, I'm gonna start off focusing on uh, either my eyes or my skin tone. If you have a close-up where you can really see your eyes, maybe start there. I'm going to start with my skin since my eyes aren't that visible. And I'm going to select my brightest um, part of my skin, which happens to be my overexposed forehead. Now over in my color range, I have what's called the fuzziness slider. And although it's kind of a ridiculous technical term, it does allow us to adjust how much of our photo as we move it up or how little of our photo is selected. So I wanna stay pretty close to just my highlights. So in my case, it's 56, but for every photo that I've done, this number is always going to change. Uh, it's based on uh, the exposure uh, and colors of your pixels. So don't dial in the number that you see here on my color range. Choose your own that works best. 
and I click OK, I can then come up here, back up to Select. I'm going to Save Selection, and I'm going to call this Skin Highlights. And you'll notice that under Operation, it is saving it as a new channel, and that's perfect. That happens by default, so you don't have to do anything else. And then I'm going to deselect, so Command D. Now, if I come here to my Channels layer, or sorry, Channels palette, you can see that my save selection is right here. If I click on the black and white thumbnail, it shows me what my selection is. I'm going to go. I'm going to click back on my RGB. This has my full color range there now. And I'm going to continue making saved selections. I want a minimum of 10 saved selections. So after I do my highlights, now I'm going to do some of my midtones. All right, not the shadows, not the highlights. Again, I'm going to adjust my fuzzy slider here to get the ideal. Now you'll also see that it's selecting some of the mirror frame uh, and a little bit of my neck, that's good. A little bit uh, of the text on my uh, sweatshirt and that's fine. My focus for this selection when I save it so that I can keep track of things is that it's my skin midtones. So I click OK, go back up to select I'm going to save selection. We're going to call this oops, spell right, skin midtones. Okay. And there it appears in my channels palette. Then I deselect Command D. And I am going to go back up, select, um, select. Or, uh, color range, sorry, forgot what I was doing at the moment. Now I'm going to click on shadows. So you see I got this shadow under my chin, under my lower lip, the shadow on my upper lip, uh, bottom of my nose. You get a little bit of the uh, frame of my glasses and some of my hair, and then more along the frame Oops, and then the um, my phone screen here in the background. Okay. Now, let's see. I want I want to get quite a bit of that shadow. So I'm just going to click OK, and I go back up to select, save selection, and this one I'm going to call. Oops, again, I can't spell skin, shadow. Okay, deselect that. Go back up, select, color range. Now, I really wish that there were some shortcuts. Adobe doesn't pre-program shortcuts for these. You can, however, program your own shortcuts. Uh, I'm not going to get into that at the moment. Uh, now I'm going to focus on the frame of my glasses. I want to really, now you're going to say, but Mr. Allen, that looks very similar to your last save selection. You're right, it is very similar. So I want to get to the darkest areas of that. If I hold down the option, no, shift. If I hold down shift while I'm clicking, it will add to my previous selection. So this way I can be sure to get all of my glasses. Now, you're also noticing it's getting all of my hair really well. That's cool. I'm going to go with that and click OK, and when I save my selection, select, save selection, I'm going to call this 
uh, glasses and hair. And then I can deselect. And yeah, we've got other parts of my image that are also selected. I'm not worried about that. Command D to deselect. So I've got four. I'm going to quickly go through and I'm just going to start working throughout the image. My shirt, uh, my the background, different colors of the background, maybe small details. Maybe you're wearing jewelry. Maybe you know I could focus on the reflection in the phone. I could focus on the um, the frame here, this X that I've got going on at the bottom. Uh, I could focus. I could uh, zoom in and focus on my eye and and see what I can get there. Uh, this time I'm just going to hit my shirt. I'm going to adjust it and I just want all of it and you see it's starting to pick up some of my skin a little bit and the edge of my ear. Click OK and we're going to come up here, select, save selection and we're going to call this shirt, deselect, select color range. Uh, this time I'm going to focus on see how much I don't want that white. I'll go to localized colors maybe. Alright. There I can get most of that reflection in my phone. I think that's kind of cool. That's where I'm going to go. And I'm going to save that selection. Select. Save selection. Phone reflection. Select. Uh, we're going to do in the other phone now. Select. Range. Something like that. Oh, there we go. I'm getting some of that. I'm getting something in the background. That's fine. My focus is here. Okay. And select. Save selection. This is my phone LCD. Okay, deselect. Uh, all of your selections uh, are going to be different. I've done this on still life objects, people, uh, landscapes, and each time it's different. And so you just need to find what's going to work best for you. I kind of like this zigzag pattern in the background. Um, I think it works well with the X in my image. So I'm going to click back here. I'm going to turn off localized and see what I can do to get that background. It's picking up some really cool shapes here in the ceiling and along my hair, uh, edge of my hair. So I like that. Save selection. And this time, uh, we're going to call this um, uh, background. Uh, no. Um, what do I call that? Uh, triangle in background. Yeah, I can't spell. Not that I'm being tested on my spelling here, but. Okay. Deselect there. Let's look and see how many safe selections I have. I'm going to actually, I don't need any of this now. Close this tab. Group. Hey, there we go. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more. So select color range. 
This time I'm going to focus on the background, more of the background. Click OK. Select, save selection. I'm going to call this background midtones. I deselect that. Now I say that the minimum you're going to want is come on, look. What is my computer doing? Where did my Okay. We're having some technical difficulties here. There we go. Okay. And I lost my train of thought. Color range. Uh, this time I'm going to focus on uh, this wood frame. And I really, I know I'm going to get a lot of. I mean, that's actually kind of cool. I can simulate a highlight coming in right here if I wanted to. And I think I will. So I'm going to do that and then go select, uh, save selection, um, simulated. Um, Light, lights on side. I know that some of these uh, names are getting long, but um, the reason is I want to know exactly what I have. Now, all my images are different, and the reason I require a minimum of 10 is it gives you a lot of options. But uh, sometimes I will go more than saved uh, a 10 saved selections. And that's because I have so much going on in the photos, so many little details I want to pick up. So, uh, load um, save selection. And um, uh, and so that's kind of how I work with it. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, okay, I'm going to do, let me show you one other thing that you can do. Color range. Now, up here where it says select and it says sampled colors, you also have reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas, highlights, midtones, shadows, and skin tones, or out of gamut. Okay, so if I click on reds, it's going to select everything that has red uh, in the RGB mix for the pixel. Um, but I can also come here and do the same thing. So I'm not going to worry about reds. Or yellow or, or greens or blues. But let's see what I have for yellows. Uh, yellows, I really like those softer areas. I'm going to say OK. Oh, there was nothing to be selected. So that's fine. Sometimes that happens when uh, we do that. And so not a big deal. Let's go to cyans. There's nothing worth trying. Magentas absolutely nothing highlights okay this is picking up everything that is a highlight now I can adjust my fuzzy slider and my range I'm not going to I really like how come I'm not getting anything selected deselect something was selected I guess select color range okay there we go. I'll have to go back and tie my yellow again. Select, save selection. 
we're going to call this highlights. So these are just my general highlights. They're not my skin highlights. So I'll go back up here to select color range. I want to try my yellows again. No, oh, okay. Select color range. Let's try midtones. What's that going? Ooh, I really like that. It's kind of it gives it an overall metallic-y look, um, which may or may not help me in the end. Okay, this is my midtones. Deselect, select color range, and what about my shadows? Hmm. We'll take it, and I may or may not uh, use it. Deselect. Now the last thing, like like I was mentioning, was the color or on your color range was your skin tones. This is going to select everything that ha that has skin tone color. Now, unfortunately. I kind of get the feeling that it's a little um, racial, it has a racial preference for skin tones. Uh, I've never, I can't, I don't have, I've never tested it with people with darker skin, uh, but uh, there are so many variations of skin tones. Um, I don't know that the algorithms they're using are going to select uh, all skin tones. So if you have darker skin, try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, let me know. I would, I would like to know. Um, and uh, we can let Adobe know that that is an issue that definitely needs to be fixed. Anyway, so I adjust my skin tones. I really don't want to worry about this weird shadow under my chin um, <clears throat> but I do like you know the how it's selecting uh, the rest of my skin there so I'm going to go select save selection and this is going to be just overall skin tones okay deselect now as I go through my channels uh, my save selections, I've got several here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I've gone five over. I do not expect you to have fifteen. Uh, you can. You can go more than fifteen, but ten is your minimum. Okay, next thing we want to do, we're done with that monotonous part we are now going to go to our layer one and what I want to do is separate have my layers palette on one side of my image and this works really well because my picture is vertical if you're if you have a horizontal image uh, it it's a little bit um, cumbersome uh, just because your layers palette will overlap a little bit wonder Oh, you can dock it over here on this side of your picture. I'm not going to. Uh, all you have to do is grab up here at the top and see how it highlights in blue. If I let go, it forces my picture frame. Actually, I'm going to do that. And then the space that my picture can be in is a little smaller. Um, all right. Go up to Image, Adjustments and threshold. You must do it this way. You cannot run a different adjustment through your... Uh, you can't do an adjustment mask is what I'm trying to say. So image adjustments threshold. So this will switch it to two values, white and black. There are no grays in this. I want to adjust my image to get the most detail in my subject. And in this case my subject is me and I'm going to focus on this face. I'm not concerned about the details that are showing up in these faces here. This will constitute all of the highlights 
and shadows in my face. So I don't want to go too dark and I don't want to go too light. I want to find that happy medium. You want to pick out, you, you want to make sure it looks like you have a mouth, preferably. And if you can see the details of your eyes, great. Make sure that uh, when, as you adjust your threshold that you can see that. Okay. So I kind of like where that's at. Um, I like that being a little bit separated, but I want to keep the integrity of my glass, uh, the frame of my glasses. So I kind of have to connect those two shadows. And I could go in and actually erase some of that. I'm not going to bother going that far. Okay, so on my layers palette, I have layer one, which is only black and white. My background layer, which is my original image, but it is turned off. Now, down at the bottom of my layers palette, I'm going to create the same number of empty layers as I have saved selections. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've lost count. I have 15 saved selections. I already had a layer one, so I need to create 15 more. So I'll go all the way up to layer 16. Okay. At this point, it would be smart to save your project. 